This is one of my personal bikes and probably gets ridden more than any other. It's the perfect Monday through Friday bike and is the perfect bike for riding to work and back. This is a 2012 Triumph Thruxton 900. The Thruxton is a version of the Triumph Bonneville. It's air-cooled and fuel-injected. The Triumph Bonneville-based bikes are retro-styled bike with many modern features. I'm a sucker for cafe bikes, but I hate unreliable, cobbled-together junk built by Chinese parts enthusiasts with an eBay gift card. This bike is dead reliable and gives me all the thrills of a vintage Triumph without the heartache of a vintage Triumph. The Bonnevilles were air-cooled until 2015 but became fuel-injected after 2009. This bike is the air-cooled and fuel-injected version, which is a combination I prefer. The bike is 900 cc's and power is adequate, which means it's kind of slow. This bike is not fast, but it definitely feels faster than it is. It's a bike you don't have to ride fast to really enjoy. It absolutely excels at quick rides on country back roads. One thing that drives me nuts about this bike is the ignition switch. It is on the left side of the headlight. Aside from looking dumb, it also makes it very hard to shut the bike off in gear since it is on the same side as the clutch. In order to shut the bike off, you have to use the kill switch and then remember to grab the key. There are aftermarket options to move it to the right side, but I'm just too lazy for that. These bikes are very well supported in the aftermarket and can be customized heavily. Unfortunately, support for the air-cooled models is starting to dry up. One of the worst features of this bike is the stock exhaust. If you're excited about the sounds of vintage sewing machines, you might enjoy the sound, but if not, you will need to get an exhaust system. The two best options are Aero and British Customs, both of which are quite expensive. I believe the Aero comes in both a single exhaust and a dual exhaust. A dual exhaust, you're looking at almost $1,200, if you can find one. The single exhaust, I don't recommend as you really want the sound of the dual exhaust on this bike. Unfortunately, to my knowledge, Aero no longer makes the exhaust, so you'll need to find a used system. I purchased a set of British Customs slip-on exhausts for this bike, but they didn't fit. I'm not entirely sure why. I don't know if they gave me the wrong parts or what, but I ended up returning those. The cost of a full system is more than I wanted to spend, so the bike is just equipped with some generic eBay Chinese mufflers, and they're honestly pretty awful. Triumph does play up the lifestyle and image of their brand, similar to Harley, so there is a premium at the dealership, but unlike Harley's, the prestige doesn't carry over into the secondary market, and clean examples can be found relatively cheap. Triumph motorcycles are a good bike to buy used. They don't seem to hold their value as well as other brands do, and Triumph owners seem to take very good care of their bikes. I wouldn't knock anyone for buying a new one, but Triumph dealers aren't as common as other brands, so getting one serviced and finding parts can be tricky. If you're looking at a used one, the Bonnevilles are a relatively simple bike and most independent mechanics can work on them. The motor is very understressed and they tend to run forever. The Bonneville platform is somewhat universal in that you can kind of pick your own style. The Thruxton is the cafe version with the Bonneville being the middle of the road standard universal motorcycle. The Bobber is a vintage cut down style and the Scrambler mimics an off-road racer. All of them provide an excellent fun bike. You just have to decide which one matches your riding style and ergonomic preferences. For me, it was a toss up between the Scrambler and the Thruxton. I chose the vintage race bike looks over the fun of the Scrambler. Fortunately, I have a buddy with a Scrambler that I can trade off with. Finding this bike wasn't easy. I looked at several and found a few options, but each one of them had something wrong with them. I chose this particular bike because it still had the rear fender and was in original condition. Most people remove the rear fender and install a tail tidy kit, which I still may do, but I'm really starting to like the look of the fender. I had this bike shipped to me from San Diego by haulbikes.com, and although they took what seemed like forever to ship it, they were upfront about the time involved and took exceptional care of my bike. This bike was traded in by the original owner on a new BMW, so I felt comfortable buying from a reputable dealer out of state. Unfortunately, I didn't study the pictures close enough and there was damage from being tipped over, despite reassurances from the dealer that there was no damage. That's a risk you take when you buy out of state without an inspection. Although the process was seamless and easy, I will be smarter next time. One thing I won't do with this bike is ride it on the freeway. The bike is perfectly suited for it, but due to the shape and style of the bike, it is not a pleasant experience. Aside from having zero wind protection, the seat tends to force your legs apart, and the narrow tank makes it difficult to grip with your legs. This requires you to hold yourself onto the bike with just your arms. This is something I would have never noticed if I hadn't ridden so many other bikes. My other sport bikes have flared tank, which allows you to lock yourself onto the bike with your legs. This gives the bike a slightly unstable feeling when hit with an unexpected crosswind or a blast from a semi. This bike is best suited for bombing around country back roads. The sweet spot for this bike is about 60 miles per hour, which is perfect for where I live. The maximum speed I can reach on my 30 minute commute is about 60 anyway, with a selection of windy back roads and lots of stop and go traffic. Top speed on the bike is somewhat 
somewhere around 110 miles an hour, allegedly. I don't really see any reason to ride that bike that fast. It's not pleasant. The seat on this bike is mediocre at best. It isn't uncomfortable, it's just there. The seat is flat and grippy. Sport bike seats tend to force the rider forward into one position, but this one doesn't and has plenty of room to scoot around on. The seat cowl is really just a cover. It doesn't actually hold you onto the bike. It can be taken off to accommodate a passenger, but this bike is really best for single riders. I've actually taken the passenger pegs off this bike for that reason. One significant drawback to this particular bike is that it is a five speed. It has a pretty tall first gear and is kind of slow off the line. It does require a lot of revs and a bit of clutch slip to get it moving. I also find myself trying for a six gear a lot. Dropping a tooth on the front sprocket would make it quicker off the line, but would make the top end issues even worse. Try I did change to a 6-speed transmission in 2016, I believe. Triumph motorcycles have a distinct feel. This is my second Triumph, the first being a Tiger 955i. I think the best way to describe the feeling is solid and a bit heavy. It isn't bad, it actually gives you a more confident feeling. This bike tracks very well and feels very connected to the road. Triumph adds a lot of detail to their bikes that you don't always notice. Sometimes it is a cast part where others would just stamp out a piece of metal or a chrome bit where it really can't be seen. One thing I notice is the detail in the neck casting to mimic the look of a Norton feather bed frame with the crossed down tube. While the appearance of a feather bed frame does nothing functionally, it gives a nod to this bike's heritage and adds a nice visual touch. One of my biggest gripes of the bike is the mirrors. Sure they look cool, but they are a bit of a pain. I constantly smack them with my hands, moving them out of position, and have knocked them into the way of the brake lever a few times. The kickstand on this bike is absolutely horrible. You're better off just to chuck it on the ground or lean it against the building. This becomes even more of an issue when you change the exhaust. It usually takes me three or four times to get it. There really is no easy way to do it other than just to dig around until you find it. A known issue on any Thruxton or Bonneville model is the suspension. You really should just throw it in the trash. This was done as a cost savings, but it really detracts from the riding experience. This bike has been upgraded with Traction Dynamics forks on the front and Icon shocks in the rear. The Traction Dynamics cartridges allow full adjustment in the front and the rear Icon shocks are also fully adjustable and mimic the looks of factory shocks. The suspension is fantastic with this setup. Another important change to make on the Thruxton is the tires. Triumph stuck Metzers on these, which typically makes a great tire. The Triumph used a retro tread pattern and shows style over function. I'm currently running Avons on it and the handling is greatly improved. All that being said, the Thruxton and the Bonneville are a solid bike. If you're looking for an easy to ride bike that gives you tons of fun without costing your license, it is definitely one to consider. You won't run any races, but you can keep up with your friends. They hold up well and are great fun to ride, and with prices for used bikes holding steady, think they're a reasonable investment. Oh good, it's finally over!